Binary is a new topic in the 2014 National Curriculum for Computing, but it's also key to understanding how computers can store and transmit numbers using only wires and switches. The first thing to appreciate is that binary is only a method for writing down or recording numbers. Once we've written down a number in binary form, it behaves exactly as we'd expect. Um, we're probably already familiar with writing down numbers in different forms, so if we had the number 4 that we wanted to communicate to somebody, we could write it down as a digit, and that's what you might, you might do in your math book. Or if we're writing a sentence in English, we could write the word 4. Or if we're using other languages, we could write down uh, number four in other ways. So we could write it down in French or in German or in Welsh. If you're familiar with Roman numerals for things like dates on monuments and uh, some clocks, we could write down uh, number four as IV. And you might also be familiar with uh, tally charts from math lessons. So we could write down the four as uh, four strokes like so. Um, the important thing to appreciate here is that however we write it down, 4 behaves in the same way. So if we were to take any of these representations of the number 4 and add 1, we would get 5. Or if we were to take one away, we would get 3. So binary, just like these, is a different way of writing down uh, numbers, but they behave as normal once we've done that. So before we look at binary, we'll have a look at the ordinary numbering system that we're used to, because it has a number of similarities uh, with binary. So we usually use a system called uh, decimal or deanery, and that's all based around the number 10. And some people think it's based around the number 10 because we have 10 fingers. So there's a, bin uh, there's a decimal number, uh, 1234, which we can see straight away because we've been learning uh, numbers like this since we started uh, infant school. So the numbers on the white rectangles are the digits, and above those we have the, the column headings which give the digits their place value. So as we move to the left, those column headings increase by a factor of 10. So we're starting with our units or our ones on the right hand side and as we move over we're multiplying by 10. So we go from 1 to 10 and then multiply by 10 to give 100 and multiply by 10 again to give 1000 and then if we keep going left we'd have 10,000, 100,000, million etc. Then in each position we can have one of 10 different digits. So we can have 1 to 9 uh, plus 0 uh, which makes 10. So what we do is we take the digit in each position, we multiply it by the column heading and that gives us the number, we add them together to find the total. So in this case we've got one lot of a thousand, two lots of a hundred, three lots of ten and one lot of four and we don't think about it in this way because we're so used to doing it but that gives us 1,234. If we, if we do it the other way around, if we have a number in our heads that we want to write down, uh, we might need to do this process. One way we could represent that um, would be to use something like an abacus. So if we were to write down the number 21, for example, what we'd need to think about is how many of each of the beads we'd need on each row to represent that number. So we'd need uh, two tens and we need one unit. Now because the way we used to seeing numbers tells us um, what um, we expect on each row, so how many units how many tens uh, we need um, we can do that either way we can start at the top and work down or we can start at the bottom and work up um, but it, a good habit to get into particularly if we're going to be working with other number systems as we will do with binary is to start at the bottom and work up so a good method uh, for working out how to represent a number is to start at the bottom and think do we need any 10 millions to represent 21 well no because we're adding up uh, numbers, we're adding up the tens and the units in this case to make 21. We can't add up anything bigger than the number we're trying to represent. So obviously we're not going to need any tens of millions or millions or um, hundreds of thousands. You can keep going upwards until you get to the first number that's smaller than the total that we're trying to represent. So the first number um, on, the, on the left that's smaller than 21 is 10. So we need some tens and um, we could keep adding tens. So one ten is uh, well too small, two tens is just a little bit less than we're looking for, three tens is too much so we obviously only want the two and then we can start adding the units until we get to 21. So starting at the bottom working up is a, a good habit to get into. So what would happen if we didn't have ten fingers? Well computers haven't got ten fingers and in fact they haven't got any fingers at all so um, they can't use the R numbering system what they have got is switches and wires, and those switches and wires can be in one of two states. They can either be on and have the electricity flowing, or they could be off 
and have no electricity flowing. And because they've got two possible states, they use a numbering system based on twos. So in every other way, though, it behaves in a very similar way to the numbering system we use. So this slide really is just the same as the previous one, but with the word 10 uh, replaced by 2. So what happens is we have a number of digits with column headings that represent the place value. But as we move leftwards, they increase by a factor of not 10, but 2. So we start off with the units on the right-hand side, and as we move over, uh, we multiply by 2. So um, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 twos are 4, 2 4 is 8, etc. And if we were to keep moving over, then we would go uh, 16, 32, 64, etc. And in each position, we can only have one or two digits, either 0 or 1. And actually, that makes binary in some ways easier than our ordinary numbering system, because we've either got one of the number in the column heading, or we haven't. So in this case, we've got one eight, no fours, one two, and one one. So what we've got there is eight pl plus two plus one, which makes 11. So it's still 11, it's just written down differently. We could have written that down in uh, you know French or Roman numerals, but we're choosing to write it down here in binary. So let's have a look at the process on the abacus uh, for turning uh, a number in our numbering system into binary. So binary is also known as base 2 by mathematicians, so I can change my abacus there. So on the left hand side we've got the column headings going downwards, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. We want to represent 21, so using the same method as before we'll start at the bottom and we'll work upwards. So we're looking for a series of column headings, which ones we need to use to add up to a total of 21. So obviously 128, 64 and 32 are all too big. The first one that's smaller than 21 is 16. So we'll have a 16 and then well if we have a, if we have an 8 that takes us up to 24 so that's too big so we don't need an 8. Um, so let's try 4 that takes us up to 20 and so we can see that we only need one more. So sometimes you could do it methodically and try the next one. Sometimes you could just see uh, which ones you need. So we'll have a, uh, a 1 as well. So 16, a 4 and a 1 make a total of 21. So um, that's how we could use the binary system to represent uh, 21. Notice that the column headings on the left hand side are all even apart from the top one. So only odd numbers will require the top beads. That's an interesting property of binary. So let's try another example. Let's try maybe 50 and see if we can do the same thing. So starting from the bottom up, the first number less than 50, 32. And let's try 16. That takes us up to 48. So now I can see that actually we only need two more to take us up to 50. So 32, 16 and 2 makes 50. Is there any other combination that makes 50? Well, it wouldn't be much of a, a numbering system if you could have uh, numbers represented in several different ways. That wouldn't be very helpful. So, no, there is only one combination of those numbers which will give us a total of 50. So that's the basic idea between behind how uh, binary works, except we don't normally use an abacus to represent it. We usually use uh, zeros and ones. So if you imagine this abacus rotated uh, 90 degrees so that the top bead is on the right hand side and the bottom bead is on the left hand side, we get something that looks like this. So we've got the same headings across the top and this time instead of um, moving a bead we put a one in the column where we need to include the heading in the total. So if we're representing 21 uh, we need a 16, we need a 4, and we need a 1. So the binary representation of 21 is 10101. So just as with ordinary numbers where something like 07 would be the same as 7, we don't need the zeros at the start because they're just saying there's no 128s, no 64s and no 32s. However sometimes in computing we do write these uh, digits down in blocks of 8 and a block of 8 is called a byte. Sometimes the, the digits might be known as bits, and bits is a contraction of binary digit. So if somebody says a bit, that just means a single uh, zero or one. Okay, so if we try a different uh, number, same process again. So this time we start at the left rather than starting at the bottom. So if we want to represent 50, again in the same way, we need 32, we need a 16, and then we need two more. So the binary representation of 50 is 110010. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So just look for the combination of column headings which makes the number that you want to represent.
I said that there were some other similarities uh, with the numbering system that we ordinarily use. So um, the first one of those is if you think about what happens if you make the largest number you can with a given number of digits. So if we make the largest one number, uh, one digit number we can uh, using our ordinary numbering system, we get nine. But if we look, nine is one less than the heading on the next column over. So nine is one less than 10. And if we repeat that process, 99 is one less than 100. And 999 is one less than 1,000. So because um, binary behaves in a consistent way with uh, our ordinary numbering system, if we try the same thing here, the largest one-digit number we can have is 1, which represents 1. And that is one less than the next column heading over, one less than 2. The largest two-bit number we can have is 3, and 3 is one less than 4. The largest three-bit number we can have is 7, and 7 is one less than 8. And 15 is one less than 16, etc. So that's another, that's another property it has in common with um, our deanery numbering system. And the second uh, additional property that they have in common is what happens when you shift the digits uh, to the left. So with ordinary numbers, uh, here we've got a 5 in the, the ones column or the units column. That represents just 5. If we shift the digits leftwards, the number gets 10 times bigger. So if we move it left one place into the tens column, it becomes 50, so which is 10 times as big as 5. And if we move it over again, it gets 10 times bigger again. So 500 is 10 times bigger than 50. And uh, binary does a similar thing, but because it's based on twos, um, what happens is as we move the number left, it doubles in size rather than multiplying by a factor of 10. So if we just have a look at that, so to start off with a simple example, uh, a one in the end position represents a one. If we move it over one, it becomes two. And if we move it over one again, it becomes four. And if you move it over on again, it becomes 8. So each time you move over, it's doubling. And the same thing happens if you've got more than 1 um, one in the number. So 1010 zero, one, zero is 10. If we shift that over one place, uh, it looks like that. So 10100 zero, one, zero, zero is 20. And if we shift it over again, then what we get is 40 because it's doubled again. So each time we move it over, it doubles. And similarly, if we move it to the right, it would halve in value. So that's a quick introduction to the binary numbering system. So key things to appreciate is that we can represent any whole number using ones and zeros just by looking at which combinations of the column headings we need to add together uh, to total the number that we're trying to represent.